Hi, this is Rafael Filippini, and today I want to cover carbon fiber internally pressurized molded paddles. I want to take a little time to sort of explain um, what an internal molded pressurized paddle compared to an externally uh, pressurized uh, uh, part or paddle. The difference is when it's internally pressurized is you inject air or through a chemical process, we sort of blow up or inflate um, the part inside the mold. So all the materials being pushed or forced to the edges of the, the cavity of the mold. And um, so then once it cures or the, the resin hardens, then all those fibers are held in place and therefore you know, you, you end up with a finished product such as this, uh, where everything is just hardened and all of your shapes and it, it's in the precise shape of the mold that you've created. Um, now let's take a further look to the inside and then also I wanna show you how this material by changing some fiber angles reacts and then some of that energy, how that energy is returned or absorbed What I've done is I've taken this paddle and essentially broke it up for you. So we've created, um, we've cut a paddle and I wanna show you what's going on on the inside. So internally, you know, we, I talked about having all of these rib structures or chambers. So now you're gonna get an opportunity to see through the inside um, and how each one of these rib structures lays um, perpendicular to the face or, you know, it's this structure that's connecting the upper surface uh, to the lower surface of the paddle. As you can see, um, the structure itself can be flexible. So I have the material, I can, you know, move it because this is only one single span. But when I actually take another portion and then I, I have it connected with a frame structure, I can no longer bend this piece because now I have an additional frame structure. These ribs that are uh, running perpendicular to the face, so when the ball hits the uh, structure on the face, in between these ribs, the material will slightly sort of compress or bend where the ribs will stay rigid and that's what creates this bite or hyperbite on the ball so when you run across the face or you the ball or the uh, paddle sort of has this rotational or or uh, upper motion that's going to impart or create a lot of spin on the ball uh, so gearbox creates spin you know with our molded technology and our hyperbite in our rib structure, our solid span technology, by allowing these ribs to grab and bite the ball. So I know that there, there's a lot of this structure, you know, helps us build not only, you know, a flexible structure, but it also creates a tremendously strong structure on the on compression side. Um, by creating a frame around it, we now create a very stiff structure. And then by creating or, or molding the rest, we can mold and contour in all of these shapes and build one single piece that is very strong. Um, with this middle section, I removed the inside, the chemical process that helps us create pressure in each one of these chambers. On the upper portion, I left it in so you can see how each one of these chambers are filled and expand. Um, with our proprietary uh, process and patented process, you know, because it does take some work and a bit of art to be able to expand each one of these ribs at the same time and at the same rate um, to get this beautiful structure uh, to become one piece. So here, what we're talking about is taking 200 different plies, joining them all together, building it in, in a way that you end up with a structure like this, that it's immensely strong, but yet very light 
and uh, can actually bend and conform to do what we want it to do in terms of returning energy or absorbing energy from the ball. I have two pieces of uh, unidirectional carbon fiber. This one is at 30 degrees. That What that means is the fiber angles are rotated at 30 degrees. And this one is at zero degrees. That means the fibers are running the length of this um, sample piece, right? So both of these weigh the same. They're the same thickness, same material, except this one is 30 degrees and this one is zero. This illustration is just gonna show and you're gonna visibly see it and perhaps hear it on how much force. So right now I'm pressing down, taking a decent amount of force for me to bend this. And you'll see when I release it, there's a lot of energy being released. So it's being uh, conserved here within the structure. I release it and that rebounds. So that is the zero degree. So that's what's gonna happen. These lower angles are gonna return more energy the higher the angle goes, so this is 30. Now it's taking much less force. I can really just bend this down. And when I bend it to almost the same position, there's very little return. There's um, very little snap in comparison to the zero degree. So again, this is zero degree, very stiff, same material. Look at that amount of energy going back, 30 degrees very soft. So that essentially is how we make up with 200 different plies of this through the structure and molding it by placing these different degrees and we can go anywhere between zero all the way to 90 degrees um, and a combination of that um, gives us tremendous design ability Having a molded paddle and hand built the way we do it by placing these plies throughout, we can definitely customize a paddle to give us control, a power 7.8, 8.5. I want more touch, well I'm gonna make a softer paddle overall and that way I can have a more uh, controlled game around the net. Or if I want more power and drive the ball, then I'm gonna stiffen up this paddle to create um, more power or return more energy to the ball. Definitely molded carbon fiber paddles, internally pressurized, is the way of the future for pickleball. These structures are far superior than anything else that's being produced today. A spacecraft are made this way, aircraft. Um, you have a lot of uh, you know, Formula One cars, uh, really high-end, um, uh, components that are being made with carbon fibers and the reason they're being built is you know the high strength to weight ratios and um, and the ability to form and, and retain that shape you know for for a long time and perform the same way they did from the day you bought them for too many years after and all of the work that we do in in the engineering offices and in the labs I mean this is the result is that you get a product that is gonna perform for you, it's going to be reliable, you don't have to worry, you know, about the voids or dead spots, edge guards, and the other, you know, thing is that we can finish these things with a beautiful finish, and I mean, they're just really nice high-end products. <laughs>